Let's create the fabric for the roof and also the space frame structure which will support the fabric in between the roof and the seating area. We'll take the existing massing model that we created earlier and we'll derive a surface from the top face. Now we need a path that goes around the outside perimeter of that and so what we'll do is we'll just click on the segment there and use the derivative tool to derive a path for the outside of the fabric and we'll also derive a path for the top of the seating area that we created earlier. So now we have two paths and what we'll do is uh, we'll draw a straight vector line and we can have uh, that vector line sweep across both those paths. So you can see I can click on a vector line, click on two paths, and that object just sweeps along both paths. So we have a surface which represents uh, the transition from the top of the seating area to uh, where the fabric is positioned. Now if we want, uh, we can query the attributes and change it so it doesn't render as a surface but renders as a wireframe object. And if we want to add additional segments into the object. You can see we have an insert segment tool which allows us to simply draw uh, right onto the face of the object and actually uh, insert segments anywhere that we want. So we can pretty much construct and build the type of space frame uh, truss that we want. There's even a triangulate tool which allows us to uh, triangulate the object using a variety of different triangulation methods to do it all in one shot. Now that looks pretty good but these are all simple thin wires which is pretty good to help visualize that, but if we want to give it some true thickness, uh, there's a frame tool. Just simply give it the radius that you want, click on the object, and each segment will become a tubular frame of the radius that we have set. And also observe that uh, it also does a Boolean operation, so it'll resolve the intersection of where all the tubular frames come together uh, to properly resolve that to make a single solid object. The last phase of this project will be to create the roof and have it animated across the top of the stadium. We draw a 2D profile for the shape of the roof and use the trim split tool to split that profile right through the original massing surface. Let's give this a solid white color. We can see the double curved surface is a paper thin surface. And if we use the parallel tool, we can give it the offset thickness that we want to convert that into a solid. Next we want to uh, split this into two pieces. So we'll have the north and south section for the roof. So we'll just draw a 2D flat plane. And then using the section tool that we used earlier, uh, we'll just do a 3D section cut uh, to split the object into two pieces. So here's our uh, north section and there's our south section. So at this point, uh, let's go ahead and uh, just temporarily get rid of the other side of the roof. And what we're going to do next is go in and animate the roof along the double curved surface on top of the stadium. Now how we're going to do this is we're going to actually generate uh, an animation path by drawing right on a surface of uh, that original massing surface that we had there. So we know that that spline curve is projected right on top of that surface. And then we create an empty animation group. It's an object that can be animated that doesn't have any objects in it. So I animate the group along the path. Now right now this animation group is empty, uh, but what I can do is once I animate it, add or subtract objects to that animation group. So I can take all the framing members, the roof, the fabric, and as many elements as I want, and just simply drag and drop those into that animation group. So now when I play the animation back, you can see that any objects added to that group will take on the same animation parameters as that group. So this is a great way to, uh, to animate complex assemblies uh, which might change over time because you can always add or subtract items uh, to that empty animation group. And that's how we get that double curved roof sliding across the double curved surface. In Form Z you can export your model to a KMZ file and open it in Google Earth. Your model is correctly positioned using the coordinates obtained when you import an aerial image from the Google Earth application, which is what we did at the beginning of this demonstration. The longitude and latitude values are saved in your FormZ file. In addition, you can also manually type in values for longitude and latitude to position your model at any location you desire. So here we have our FormZ model imported into Google Earth. This concludes our demonstration of a 
recreation of the Beijing National Stadium, originally designed by the Swiss architecture firm Herzog and de Meuron. This stadium is home to the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, China, and was nicknamed the Bird's Nest due to its architecture. This is only a small representative sample of just a few of the many tools in Form Z. Please watch some of the other demonstrations to observe for yourself the vast potential of Form Z in modeling, rendering, and animation.